Hey guys, it's Jim. Thanks for tuning in. This is episode numero dos, number two of my Luminar 2018 tutorial series. Uh, if you didn't see the first episode, go back one and check it out. It's all about getting started in Luminar. This one is all about filters, so let's go ahead and dive in. Okay, I have an image here, and I'm probably going to go through two images. I just want to show you some of the filters and some of the capabilities and the things you can do with filters. Um, I went and counted. There are 50. That's a five followed by zero, five zero filters in Luminar 2018. I kept saying, oh, there's 40, 40, 45. I counted, there's 50. That's a, you know, pardon my French, a shit ton of filters. And that's good, that's great. In fact, I'm fired up about it because I like to use filters on my photos and I like to sort of mess around and do stuff. And the more the merrier as far as I'm concerned. So, hey, if you use Lightroom, uh, you might want to think about getting Luminar. You can keep your library in Lightroom if you want to, but think about Luminar as a plugin uh, because you got 50 filters. That'd be 50. Well, your view would be whatever. Anyway, 50 filters. Uh, Lightroom has what, a dozen or 15 maybe? So it's crazy um, and it's fun and it's powerful. So let's get started. All right, so I'm going to add some filters. All you do is, uh, and by the way, let me back up. Um, if you open Luminar and have everything closed, you'll have that. You click the little button here and you open your filter panel on the right hand side. And then you choose Add Filters, if you can click it. And there you go, it'll open up all these filters. Now, the new ones I have starred, and I'll use some of those uh, in, these, uh, in this video today. You can also type in a filter by name. So if you're looking for a vignette, you could type in vignette and you'll find it there, right? Um, the other thing is, as I hover over them, you'll see a description. And that's because I have the information box checked, or the little eye. If I uncheck it as I move over them, that description does not show up. Okay, you can also sort by favorites. So my favorites are gonna be the ones that I've starred um, and they're just the new filters. So that's just the new stuff. Let me just show you that again. Look at that list. I mean, you got a nice long list of stuff that's just new. Um, and uh, you know, you can also go by category. So let me show you the categories. We've got essential filters, issue fixers, creative. Look at all that. I love being creative and just kind of thinking up and making stuff and seeing if you can make it happen in Luminar. And, you know, 99% of the time you can. So that's creative. Professional, these are a little bit more advanced, and that's cool. We're going to talk about some of those. And utility, like, uh, so there's a lot of different things you can do. Um, really, the only limit is what you can think, right? Your imagination is really the only limiting factor, in my opinion. So I'm going to add a couple of filters, including the new Brilliance and Warmth. Now, I could click that X to close the filter catalog, or I can just click the Add Filters button again. Either way, it's gone, and I'm back to having all my filters in the panel uh, on this right-hand side. And by the way, that's where they all show up. So now I've got tone, for example, and I'm just kind of riffing on this edit. I don't have a real plan. I'm not here to show you how to edit this photo as much as I want to demonstrate sort of the power of filters and the flexibility and all the cool stuff you can do. So I'm just going to bump up some of these items here and kind of see what happens. And uh, hopefully it looks good. <laughs> um, maybe not. Okay, there you go. So. Um, what I wanted to do is bring up the color, and I think it's pretty clear I did that. I can show you the before and the after, right? And here's a split screen before and after if you want to take a look. But the point is I had a fairly flat, uh, really overexposed image, and now I've got a much better exposed image with better contrast and much uh, more color in it. This is a fall image from Central Texas, believe it or not. I took this a number of years ago, but every now and then we get some decent color on a few of the trees, not many. and. Uh, I was there far and away because I love color. So um, that's filters, um, and that's what I would do in this photo. Now, there's 50 filters, as I said, so I could keep going and going and going. I might want to make it look a little more romantic, kind of interesting, so I could add image radiance, close the filter catalog, and then just kind of do this sort of thing to make it kind of a little bit moody, kind of uh, what, what I used to call... Um, like if you ever use Color Effects Pro but in the Nick Suite, they had a, a filter called Glamour Glow. That's kind of what Image Radiance is like to me. I love it. It adds that kind of romantic lighting. Uh, you can see there's the before and there's the after. But here's one of the cool, one of the many cool things is in any one of these filters, um, you have the flexibility of adjusting them within that image without going to another layer. So what I mean by that is you can mask a filter on a layer without uh, impacting anything else. So let me explain that. All you do is you click on the filter, click on that mouse, or sorry, that paintbrush, and you have three different, or well, four really options, but I'm gonna choose brush. And now you look, the filter's been highlighted. So I've got a brush 
just for this filter, all right? So I can also change here if I want to. I can paint or erase, choose a size, softness, etc. I'm actually gonna increase the size uh, with my right bracket key. And now I can just paint this um, image radiance filter just into certain parts of the photo. Let's say I just wanna paint it over here on this right hand side, maybe a little bit over there. And now I can come click on this button to look at my mask. You can see where I've painted the filter and then I can say done. So now the image radiance applies only where I painted it and not across the entire image. So there's the before filter, uh, before image radiance, and there it is after I painted it onto just that one section of the photo. So very flexible, very fun, very powerful, and that's called a filter mask. Uh, but here's another cool thing, and that is you can click on the name of the filter. I don't know if you saw what I did there. Uh, I was in saturation and vibrance. I clicked on the name of the filter, and I can hit reset, That'll reduce it back to zero, right? And I want to maybe, let's say I want to go back. It was like 10 and 12 or something, I don't know. Um, I can also hit delete. I just completely deleted that filter. Well, I want it, so I'm gonna go back and add it again. It's right here. Close the filter panel, and I'm just gonna put it back where I wanted it, right? And it's probably a little bit more than I had. By the way, I can drag these if I want to go back to that order. It doesn't impact the photo, but um, if you like things in a specific order, you can put them in an order. Um, you can create a mask, you can duplicate this filter. So I just added the same filter with the same edits or the same slider adjustments to it. So I've now got saturation and vibrance twice, both with 17, right? So I don't need that, but there you go. Um, and the last thing, and this is probably the most important, and that is blending mode. You can actually adjust a blending mode for a specific filter on a layer. So this is not a blending mode to use on an entire layer, although you can do that. This is a blending mode to use on a filter within a layer. So I can choose, let's say, darken for just the saturation. Didn't really do anything. Let's try multiply. Okay, that did a lot. Um, one of the popular ones for me is overlay. All right, that's kind of intense on this one, but you can see now it says blend underneath. I can just go back to normal if I want to, and there I go. So um, now you can also do this on layers. We'll talk about layers in a subsequent video and some of the tips and tricks there, but that's how a, uh, a blending mode will work on a specific filter. So you can come in on any of these and choose a blending mode, say color burn for brilliance and warmth, and hey, Jim, that looks terrible. So I'm gonna set that back to, well, let's try overlay just to see what happens. Kind of dark, but uh, not too bad. You can see it's there now. Um, I'm gonna go back to normal just because I like it at normal. So that's a few tips and tricks with filters on this photo. Let me get another one. I wanna show uh, one of the new filters and that's develop. And I'm also gonna add denoise and I'm gonna add brilliance and warmth. And so let me make a couple of adjustments here. Develop is a very powerful filter. If you're using a raw file, the filter will be called raw develop. So there's a difference uh, in the name, but not really in how it works. The only difference is because this is a JPEG, it says develop, not raw develop. And I have no options other than as shot for my white balance, whereas I have a list of options if I had a raw file. I also have lens correction and transform. So if you have any distortion in your photo, or maybe you just wanna add distortion for a sort of creative effect, you can do that. You can fix chromatic aberration and devignetting. In transform, you can come over here and you know change the aspect ratio and the scale if you need to adjust these to perhaps straighten some leaning buildings or something like that. It works very well for that. So I'm actually just gonna reset the filter and go back to adjust. Uh, you have powerful controls here. You can come in here and do the sort of stuff that you might wanna do to get your photo started. To me, it's a great filter to start with. It's never the only filter I would use. Uh, in fact, as I showed you already, I would probably use Brilliance and Warmth, and I think I would go and get something like a uh, adjustable gradient. This gives me control over the top and the bottom of the photo separately. I can set the orientation. I want the orientation to be about here. I wanna uh, collapse the zone where the gradient is a little bit. And in the top, I'm fine with it. The bottom, I wanna lift the exposure. So I come over here, and you can see I'm lightening the foreground. I think I'm getting better distribution of light now. Maybe I wanna increase the warmth in the upper part of the photo to really bump up that sunset tone and make it more vibrant. I don't really care about doing that in the bottom, right? So you can just stack filters, and again, I can move these around if I want to. 
Now here's another example of filter masking. Let's say I want to add denoise. Well, denoise is now a filter. I talked about it in the last video. It used to be a tool. There were five tools and they were in this right hand side, but now there's four tools, four from before. The fifth one is denoise, which became a filter. So it's actually real time noise reduction. So it's much more rapid and much easier to use. And again, you can just hit uh, the paintbrush, add brush, and come over here and paint this into the sky if you want to create a smooth, kind of dreamy, noise-free sky, which I like to do. Uh, and I'm doing a really quick job on the mask here. There's the before, you can see, uh, or excuse me, there's the mask, you can see what I mask, and I'm done. So that's a quick and easy way to add a filter mask and use denoise. I'm gonna clear this uh, section, and we're gonna talk about workspaces in another video. I wanna show you a couple of more filters. There's dodge and burn, there's LUT mapping, and then there's sun rays. I'll do sun rays last. So dodge and burn, very powerful, it's new, it's super fun. It just allows you to darken or lighten areas of the photo. So I'm on lighten, I'm on strength of 50. Let's say I just wanna lighten this foreground. I'm just gonna come paint a adjustment into the foreground, and now it's lighter. At the same time, maybe I wanna darken the sky a little bit. So I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna lower the strength, I'm gonna increase the size, and I'm just gonna darken the sky. So I'm basically doing targeted lighting adjustments using dodge and burn. And let me hit done. And you can see the before, really uh, brighter sky, darker foreground, and after, kind of the reverse, right? So that's dodge and burn, LUT mapping. Very cool, LUT stands for look up table. It's basically a color preset, and it's not exactly true. Uh, but LUT files are generally used in movie making to apply a color look or a color grade to a, a film um, or a you know, snippet of film in a movie. And now you can use LUT files to apply a color grade or a color look to your, your photos in Luminar. So LUT mapping, you just say load LUT file and I'm going to go grab this LUT and boom, look at that. One quick uh, click adjustment and I can change contrast or saturation and now I have a completely different look. There's the LUT mapping before and after. I can come over here and say, yeah, I don't really like that one. I'm gonna go teal and orange, and boom, teal and orange, right? Change the contrast, change the saturation. I could add more filters to adjust the, uh, uh, the light in the foreground, or I could paint it again with dodge and burn. Unlimited options here, super powerful, super fun. That's LUT mapping, and you'll be hearing more about that. But I also wanna show you a matte look, and then I'll show you sun rays. Matte look is kind of a fade filter. Uh, to me, it's kind of that Instagram look. If you wanna go sort of old school looking, you can do these sort of things. The, uh, the cool thing is it has this toning feature, so you can bump up the tones uh, in a specific color range and sort of create your own custom looks and make the fade as intense or, or as subtle as you want it to do uh, or to be. So there's the before, there's the after. Just a cool way to create sort of vintage type effects. And the last filter I wanna show you here is sun rays. I've already showed this a lot of times in other videos. Um, it's gonna be very popular. You can move it all around, do whatever you like. I don't wanna spend a lot of time on it because you've already seen a lot about it, but it is a new filter. It's pretty interesting. As you can see, you can make a whole lot of adjustments to a photo with that. And I think that's it. Let me see if um, hue shift is new. I'll just show you that real quick. Um, it just allows you to make some interesting color tone adjustments. Um, something like that. So it's kind of wild and crazy if you want it to be, but it doesn't have to be. You could add saturation and vibrance. You could add color balance and make further adjustments and refinements. Very flexible, uh, but another new filter. And let me see if there's anything else we want to cover here. Um, I think that's probably about it for this. So that's a quickie on filters. Uh, we talked about filter masking. We talked about coming in here and using blend modes and adjusting those and rearranging filters, resetting them, deleting them, duplicating them, and of course using your brush to apply filters selectively with the filter mask. Lots of power, lots of flexibility. There's 50, or maybe it's 50 fo uh, photos, filters in Luminar 2018. It's super powerful, a lot of fun. I'm having a great time with it. I think you will too. That's it on filters. I'll be back soon with a uh, episode three in which I will be talking about workspaces. So tune in for that. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, share, do all that stuff. I appreciate it. Thanks, friends. Adios. See you next time. Bye.